body mechanics and patient mobility. The two concepts of body mechanics and patient mobility are directly related to one another. Nursing personnel must learn and practice proper principles of body mechanics to prevent injury to themselves and injury to their patients. When assisting patients in mobility, nurses must be constantly aware of their own body mechanics. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, nursing personnel, which includes unlicensed assistive personnel, UAPs, such as certified nursing assistants and orderlies, rank second in the number of occupational injuries requiring days away from work. Nurses fall just below the top five occupations that require days away from work resulting from injuries. The majority of these injuries are classified as musculoskeletal disorders, MSDs, with back injuries prominent among healthcare personnel. Most injuries occur when a nursing personnel perform tasks that require repetitive movement, uncomfortable posture, and exertion to assist patient in activities such as feeding, dressing, bathing, toileting, repositioning, and ambulation. Awareness of proper ergonomic principles. Ergonomics is the science of matching workplace conditions and job demands to the capabilities of workers especially in regards to MSDs and their prevention. And good body mechanics help prevent injury. Mechanical lifting devices, sling and standing lifts, and assistive patient handling equipment, such as a roller board, sliders, friction reduction pads, transfer chairs, and gate belts, work by taking on the energy and force that otherwise are imposed on the nurse during the lifting transferring or repositioning of a patient. Regular use of lifts and other assistive devices reduces the risk of injury. When a mechanical lift with a sling is used, the patient's head must be supported during transfer. To ensure safety, most facilities require two staff members to be present during patient transfer with the mechanical lift. The patient should be informed of what is happening continually during the process because Mechanical lifts can be frightening to the patient. Safe patient transfer requires adequate staffing. The right mix of personnel and appropriate readily available, well-maintained patient lifting equipment. The licensed practical nurse is responsible for being competent in the appropriate and safe use of equipment and for ensuring the UIP are knowledgeable regarding proper use of the assistive device. Evaluation of safe lift programs. Evidence summary. This study surveyed 200 long-term care facilities that use mechanical lifting devices for a three-year period. 95% of the facilities had mechanical lifts available for use, with an 80% compliancy of the staff using the devices. All of the facilities reported a decrease in the number of work-related injuries and workers' compensation claims after implementing a safe lift program. Safe lift programs incorporated the director of nursing and nursing staff to ensure that mechanical lifts were used consistently and that all nurses in UIP were trained properly in the use of the devices. Application to nursing practice. All nursing personnel must be trained in proper use of mechanical lifting devices. Nursing personnel should strive to use mechanical lifting devices 100% of the time that the patient condition warrants a mechanical lift. DONs must convey the importance of safe lift programs and ensure that all nursing personnel use mechanical lifts when necessary. That was an evidence-based practice. So back to what we were talking about, equally important is the use of appropriate body mechanics or movements that protect large muscle groups from injury and provide safety for patients during ambulation assistance. Special care should be taken in the care of older adults. Assistive devices such as splints, crutches, braces, canes, gait belts, and walkers are available to aid in promotion of the patient activity. Also important is the need to teach the patient appropriate positioning for home care 
and to help a family member to learn how to assist a patient at home. Use of appropriate body mechanics. Understanding of body mechanics, the area of physiology for the study of muscle action and how muscles function and maintaining the posture of the body and prevention of injury during activity includes knowledge of how certain muscle groups are used. The nurse uses body mechanics daily in making beds, assisting the patient to walk, carrying supplies and equipment, lifting, providing patient care, and carrying out other procedures. For prevention of injury to the nurse and the patient, principles of body mechanics for healthcare workers should be followed by all healthcare professionals and personnel. Patients also should be taught principles of good body mechanics to protect themselves. The appropriate use of body mechanics should be practiced consistently in the workplace and outside of the workplace so that MSDs do not occur. Maintenance of appropriate body alignment is the key factor in proper body mechanics. The term alignment refers to the relationship of various body parts to one another. Alignment helps balance and helps coordinate movements smoothly and effectively. Maintenance of a wide base of support, a stance with feet shoulder width apart. When standing is one of the basic concepts of a good body mechanic and alignment that should be followed because it helps in providing better stability. Better stability prevents the nurse from losing proper balance while carrying out patient care, which could result in strain or injury to muscles. The skeletal muscles and the nervous system maintain equilibrium or balance, which facilitates appropriate body alignment when lifting, bending, moving, and performing other activities. Bending the knees and hips before attempting these activities protect the back from the stress and potential injury inherent to the physical work of nursing. When stooping, flex the hips and or bend the knees and maintain appropriate body alignment. The back kept straight. Bending from the waist should be avoided because this will, in time, strain the lower back. Work at a height or level that is comfortable to help prevent undue stress and strain on the back muscles. Adjust the height of the bed to a level appropriate for your height. Use of large muscle groups, such as arms, arm and shoulders, muscles, hips, and thigh muscles, help to perform a bigger workload more safely. The more muscle groups that are used, the more evenly the workload is dis distributed. If the base of support is widened in the direction of movement, less effort is needed to carry out an activity. To avoid twisting the spine, nurses should stand directly in front of the person or object with which they are working. Nurses have numerous other ways to protect themselves and the patient from injury. Carrying objects close to the midline of the body, avoiding reaching too far, avoiding lifting when other means of movement are available, such as sliding, rolling, pushing, or pulling, using devices instead of or in combination with lifting, and using alternating periods of rest and activity are just a few of the ways to prevent injury. Knowing the maximum weight that is safe to carry is also important. Many facilities suggest a 50 pound weight limit on lifting for their nursing staff. Nurses should assess their own abilities and limitations and those of the person helping. If working in pairs, correct use of body mechanics is essential to provide efficient care while preventing injury. Mobility in older adults. The skin of older adults is more fragile and susceptible to injury. When moving or transferring older adults, avoid pulling them across the bed linens because this has the potential to cause shearing or tearing of the skin. I always support older adults under the joints when moving them in bed. Lifting in any other matter increases the stress on the joint and causes increased pain, particularly if some degenerative joint disease exists. Explain each step in simple language and avoid jerky, sudden movements. Aging tends to result in loss of flexibility and joint mobility, which often interferes with normal transfer techniques and necessitates modifications to protect patient and nurse. Weakness and hypotension are common signs and symptoms noted in an older adult on bed rest. Proceed slowly and cautiously when helping a patient ambulate for the first time after prolonged immobility. While facilitating independence and proper utilization of the patient body mechanics, 
Use assistive devices such as canes, walkers, and trapeze bars. Provide adequate help to ensure patient safety when moving a patient from a line to a sitting position and from a sitting to a standing position. Older adults who have many diseases or have undergone prolonged bed rest have greater risk for hypertension and postural change, orthostatic hypertension. Patients who use medications to reduce blood pressure are at a greater risk for orthostatic hypertension. Older adults, particularly those with altered sensory perception, sometimes become fearful when hydraulic lifts are used for transfers. Provide eyeglasses and basic instructions. Limited positioning alternatives are available for the older adult who has arthritis, neuropathies, or other restrictive conditions. Discourage older adult patients from sitting for prolonged periods of time without stretching and moving. Lack of movement presents a risk for contractures of joints. Ensuring good body alignment when a patient is sitting is a way to prevent joint and muscle stress. Provide patient teaching that includes use of strong joints and large muscle groups for activities that require extra strength to prevent strain and pain in joints. For older adults, patients with osteoporosis, encourage appropriate exercise programs that prevent fractures and reduce bone loss. Encourage exercise programs for those older adults who do not participate in regular exercise. Ensure that patients consult with their healthcare provider before beginning any exercise program. Special adjustments to an exercise program are often necessary to prevent any problems for those older adults in advanced age. age. Older adults who are not able to participate in a structured exercise program are frequently able to achieve improved circulation and joint mobility by stretching and exaggerating normal movements. Body mechanics for healthcare workers. When planning to move a patient, arrange for adequate help. Use mechanical aids if help is unavailable. Two workers lifting together divide the workload by 50%. Encourage patients to assist as much as possible. This promotes patients' abilities and strengths while keeping workload to a minimum. Keep back, neck, pelvis, and feet aligned. Avoid twisting because twisting increases risk of injury. Flex knees, keep feet shoulder length apart because a broad base of support increases stability. Position yourself close to the patient or object being lifted. This minim minimizes strains and undue stress on the lifter. Holding an object or patient away from the body increases the workload. Use arms and legs, not your back. The leg muscles are stronger larger muscles capable of greater work without injury. Slide patient towards yourself using the pull sheet. Sliding requires less effort than lifting. Pull sheet keeps to a minimum any shearing forces which can damage patient's skin. Set, tighten abdominal muscles and gluteal muscles in preparation for move. Preparing muscles for the load limit strains the least possible level to the least possible level. Person with the heaviest load coordinates efforts of team involved by counting to three. Simultaneously lifting helps the load for anyone lighter lifter. Simultaneous lifting keeps the load for any for any one lifter to a minimum. Positioning of patients. Positioning of patients is a common intervention performed by nursing personnel. Many positions can be used to prevent patients from developing a complication. Inappropriate positioning poses the risk of causing permanent disability. Mobility versus immobility. Mobility is a person's ability to move around freely in his or her own environment. Moving about serves many purposes and including exercising, expressing emotion, attaining basic needs, performing recreational activities, and completing activities of daily living, ADLs. 
um, such as bathing, dressing, and eating. 